The concepts behind the singularity, basically exponential growth of information technology and the increasing purview of information technology is not a utopian vision. It's going to introduce many new issues that we have to deal with. Uh, but it's only these technologies that have the scale to deal with the problems that we're now concerned with. And in fact, on that, I'm very optimistic. I just uh, got done actually writing the nation's energy plan for the National Academy of Engineering. They organized a blue ribbon panel called Grand Challenges in Engineering. And Larry Page, the co-founder of Google and myself, uh, wrote the energy plan. And we noted that solar energy uh, is growing exponentially. It's another one of these exponentials. And you might say, well, energy doesn't sound like an information technology. And fossil fuels clearly are not. They're an old industrial 19th century technology. But solar panels built using nanotechnology is a form of information technology. Nanotechnology is applying computerized information processes to design new materials at the level of molecules uh, to create new devices and new materials that are far more capable. And there's a whole new generation of solar panels coming out that are much more lightweight, efficient, low cost. And the cost of solar energy has been coming down very rapidly, uh, despite the recent uh, blip in uh, fossil fuels. Fossil fuels have basically been going up. The crossover, conservatively uh, forecast, is within five years, where solar energy will be less expensive than every form of fossil fuels. And solar energy has been doubling every two years, not every year, but every two years for the last 20 years. But people don't notice it when it's doubling little numbers. But it's now up to, you know, maybe around half a percent. It's only about eight doublings away from meeting 100 percent of our energy needs. Then you might say, well, is there really enough sunlight? There's actually 10,000 times more than we need. If you captured one part in 10,000 of the sunlight that falls in the Earth, you'd need all of our energy needs. And we're going to do exactly that. And as we increasingly apply nanotechnology to solar panels, they ultimately will be extremely inexpensive. And we'll be able to meet the 10 to the 13th watts of energy we use worldwide at very low cost. Right now we spend $2 trillion a year on fossil fuels. We'll be able to replace that at far less cost uh, with solar energy. And that's going to happen, and it is happening, and there's billions of dollars of venture capital going into this. And uh, this has been on a very smooth exponential ride. It's very easy to dismiss these phenomena when they're only 1% of the solution of a problem, just like the Genome Project was dismissed when it was 1%, or the Internet was dismissed when it was only a few ten tens of thousands of nodes. But as it grows exponentially, it ultimately will be uh, a profound contributor to these uh, problems. And I'm very uh, confident that within a couple decades, we will be using these forms of renewable energy. Uh, there are similar new technologies emerging in food and water. Uh, in water, for example, Dean Kamen has a device that's about the size of a washing machine uh, that can also produce energy. You can put any kind of fuel, including cow dung, in it, and literally that's actually what's being done. And you can put the dirtiest water from swamps and uh, sewers in it, and it produces totally clean water that's uh, even cleaner than what uh, you find in bottled water. And these are being used now, uh, right now in experimental installations, but in third world countries where people are bringing cow dung to fuel them and swamp water uh, and turning them into uh, totally clean water. One device, which ultimately would cost about $1,000 each, can meet the water needs of 100 people. We computed that we could meet the entire unmet water needs of Africa for three billion dollars, which is a small fraction of the cost of a single dam that moves dirty water from one place to another. And we could meet the entire world needs of water for about ten billion dollars, which is really not much money. Uh, so these technologies are right now in an early stage, but ultimately this type of technology and others that are emerging using these new forms of nanotechnology will uh, meet the water needs of the world. Uh, as well as the energy needs through solar energy. Food, there's also new technologies like hydroponics, uh, being able to grow any type of crop uh, in buildings uh, that uh, have desirable nutritional uh, capabilities that are not uh, using chemicals, uh, ultimately at very low cost because they'll be automated. We can grow meat in vitro 
uh, without animals, basically through cloning, we can clone organs and we can clone muscle tissue and we can clone the muscle of one animal and create millions of pounds of meat and then actually change its composition so instead of let's say saturated fat, this beef that you produce could have uh, anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats and be much healthier uh, and ultimately be very inexpensive. PETA, the, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, uh, which is a strong animal rights organization, has endorsed this concept. Uh, rather than trying to get everybody to be vegetarian, they realize some people want to eat meat, but we could produce meat without animals with far less ecological damage uh, at very low cost uh, through these types of emerging technologies. If you go out 20 years, this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be able to solve these resource issues. It's not the case that we're running out of resources. It's that we need to, we have this tons of water around. There's 10,000 times more sunlight than we need. There's lots of potential food, but we need these new technologies to transform unusable energy. Right now, we, we don't take advantage of all that sunlight or the geothermal energy. All the water around is polluted and we don't take advantage of it. Uh, these new technologies will enable us to transform these resources into a form that we can use at very low cost.